Hello, Vinay. Please let me know if you hear me. Yes, uh, see me. Hey, you be hi. I can hear you well, uh, and I can see you well as well. Uh, thank you yeah. so much for that introduction. Yes, yeah, super. Thanks. Uh, so since I already introduced you, and uh, now we have your time to present like uh, your presentation. And then um, if you got lucky, we got some time for Q&A session and um, have fun. Awesome. Thank you so much, Yuvi. And uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to, to talk to all of you uh, and share about some of the insights on games uh, that I have, uh, especially on, on emerging markets and how to succeed in them. Before I even begin, I, I must acknowledge that uh, uh, it's an absolute privilege to be here, to be talking to all of you. I know uh, uh, going through unimaginable times, uh, I, I cannot imagine how uh, how much of a challenge it would be right now. But I'm glad that uh, that that we are having this forum. We are thinking about 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 business, about growing uh, games, um, and hopefully, uh, as as things become all right. Uh, this will become uh, very useful and, and you will be able to scale this and, and get back to normalcy. Um, having said that, let me now begin the topic. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm looking at uh, Google Play in India and I work in the Google Play Games Partnerships team. Uh, I'm going to talk about localization for succeeding in emerging markets. Uh, I have about 10 odd slides. Uh, so I think we should have enough time for Q&A at the end. And I'm happy to take questions as well. Just a quick introduction about myself. Uh, as, uh, as as you already know, my name is Vinay Charani. I'm part of the Play Partnerships team. I'm based in Mumbai in India. I have about 13 years of experience across media, FMCG, and mobile gaming. Uh, about five years of that is at Google. Uh, my expertise lies across monetization, IP, and ads. Uh, UX of apps and games, emerging markets expansion, as well as uh, analytics to drive growth. Uh, I work with some of the top global studios uh, and help them scale their games, both in India as well as globally. Uh, my my personal favorite game is FIFA, uh, now EAFC. Uh, and then that's, that's on console, though. And on mobile, uh, there's, there's a game called World Trip. It's a, it's a game by an Indian developer. It's one of the biggest games in the US market. Uh, and that's something that's uh, that, that I've been really fond of recently. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a quick introduction about myself. Uh, let's jump right into the topic now. And I'm going to cover primarily two things. One, I'm going to share with you how large is the emerging markets opportunity. Uh, I can't share very specific numbers, but I'll try to highlight how how fast it's growing as well as what's what's been the size of it. Um, but the crux of the meeting today or, or the presentation today rather is going to be on localization and games. I'm going to talk about four specific things. How do you localize your content effectively? Uh, how important is localized pricing for you in, in emerging markets? Uh, how important are payment partners in these local uh, in these emerging markets and as well as local partnerships that you can form? So these four uh, pillars will be uh, are, are, are something that other game developers really focus on. Uh, and that's something that I'm going to talk about in detail. And hopefully we'll have uh, we'll have at least five minutes left for for Q and A at the end. All right, I'm going to jump in straight to the first one. Uh, there's a bunch of charts. There's there's that big chart on the on the on the slide as well. But the story that I want to communicate across is that the emerging markets consumer spends on games are actually growing. Uh, they're growing faster than developed markets, and that's that's something that you would have you would have maybe guessed because of the size would be smaller. But the opportunity is also actually now becoming significantly large. Uh, so let me first explain the chart. Uh, if you look at the CAGR on gaming consumer spends on Google Play uh, between 2019 to 2023, and I'm forecasting the rest of 2023. Uh, then what you'll see is that that if I look at emerging markets of SEA, LATAM, and India. They are growing about 1.3x faster as compared to the developed markets uh, that we traditionally have, like uh, North America, Western Europe, Japan, Korea. So, a that that growth rate being so much higher uh, is 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 showcasing that uh, that lot more users are are paying within games, right? We always associate emerging markets with the fact that they'll contribute users to your game, but this is this is trying to showcase to you that not just are they and they're spending time. They're also spending money within apps and games, uh, and especially within games. 
also if you look at let's say a sea or a latam entire as a region right they would be among the top 5 markets uh, in terms of consumer spends again for for google play between 2019 to 2023 uh, so not just is this growing fast if you look at it as a collective or as a region and they are similar in a lot of ways uh, then this becomes a very sizable opportunity as well among the top 5 globally for play is 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 a lot of revenue and that's happening because a few developers are focusing on on these markets and and able to manage are managing to extract revenue from users as well right uh, i i i know this this doesn't re- really reflect the absolute values or showcase the 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 absolute number of of or uh, in terms of the opportunity size uh, unfortunately i cannot share that across but what i can share is that with uh, with competition being slightly limited as compared to say a developed market uh, and a larger user base that you will get uh, which is which is also paying within games now emerging markets should be something that you should be focusing on and if if that's something that's aligned uh, how do you go about doing this localization has been the key for enabling developers to monetize their emerging market users and let me just take explain this is a little broadly before i deep dive further google play pl- provides you a great platform for reaching users across the globe so you may have users uh you may build your game entirely in europe but then you may have users in asia in africa in in americas uh earning revenue from these users is actually a challenge right because play provides that platform for you to reach the users how do you earn revenue from them uh and that's where localization comes in and and developers that have utilized your localization and and enabled that for their users in different markets are able to monetize this global user base the most effectively and how do they go about doing that what does it really include it there are four pillars that i would want to talk about one is content second is pricing third is on payments and fourth is on partnerships right uh, let's deep dive into each of them to and and also i'll share across some examples as well uh, on on what exactly is the uh, or it, are some of the developers doing in in to across each of these pillars to localize their games for emerging markets some of these examples may be from an india market perspective but uh, trust me this is happening across emerging markets so you could replace it with any other geo it would be the same <clears throat> so firstly content localization a lot of times uh, gaming developers would look at content localization with with just language localization but content localization goes way beyond lo- language localization you need to be creating relevant content offers and event for your users in different markets for them to be able to connect with the game monetize or pay within your game as well right uh, so first things first you you need to figure out and you do need to look at language so you do need to look at whether the local what kind of language or which is the language that that users in a particular geo are per- preferring um, english will definitely not be the uh, not be the number one language let's say in 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 india se as well as latam uh identify that language and and see that what kind of localization can you provide within your game in terms of that the second point is, is that this could be very resource intensive right for how many languages are you going to continue to uh, localize your game uh so the so the tactic or the strategy that a lot of developers have utilized is uh they've gone and reduced the amount of text that's there within their their screens or within their tutorials right uh you'd have a lot more video content you'll have a lot more voice content uh, than text and when you have video and voice content the need for you to localize uh, that becomes or the resources required to localize that are significantly lesser as compared to what you would do with text so that's the second one the third piece is essentially aligning with the local calendar uh and what do i mean by aligning with the local calendar there would be a bunch of local festivals or there would be a bunch of cultural events that are happening in uh, in a particular region or geo and there might be sporting events that are really relevant for that particular particular geo um uh, for instance the carnival is a massive moment in brazil uh, cricket is is a is, is the biggest sport in india the world cup is coming up later this year in in india uh, it's it's going to happen in india after almost a decade uh 
uh, and that's a great sporting event where a lot of local developers as well as global developers are creating events and moments around it so you need to align your in game events and offers around the local calendar for for these regions uh, when you do that you create locally relevant content and you provide yourself an opportunity to thus engage your users and also monetize them do not uh, do not miss the monetization element in this entire piece it it's not just for engaging with the users create virtual items create uh, uh, create in game offers and events that are relevant or around that particular local uh, event and thus uh, thus monetize your users more effectively what you're seeing on the screen uh, is a screenshot from a global developer they created an in game event for a very popular festival in india called holi and what you'll notice is that not just are they are they showcasing what happens during that this is essentially uh, colors coming out of guns uh, during the event but they're also having some virtual items uh, although you may not be able to see them the, the screenshot will is, is slightly blurry but there are some virtual items that are being given at at discounted rates or or there are special offers that have been created uh, which are available to users during this time and which is why what what makes this content localization really useful so that's the first first pillar that i wanted to talk about uh, in terms of uh, content localization the next one is in terms of localized pricing uh, again you would all be familiar with the concept of localized pricing but i want to be a little more uh, prescriptive in this and i want to share across that you would want to do sub dollar but get sub dollar pricing for emerging markets but do it at at the corresponding value as well uh, and what do i mean by corresponding value i'll also explain it in a bit more detail later on uh, but for those who are not familiar the concept of localized pricing essentially is is resides within the within the within the principle of purchasing power parity uh so factor in purchasing power parity for your in game pricing what you may price for western markets or far more developed markets may not work as a price point for local or emerging markets the second point is focus on buy a percentage uh a lot of times i've seen gaming developers focus on arpopu as well as average transaction values right uh and that that works really well for for western markets however for uh for markets like india latam as well as sea and other emerging markets since the size of the user base is so large if you are able to monetize a large number of that of that user base at even smaller price points you would have considerably higher revenue that uh, the opportunity to make considerably higher revenue and which is why focusing on buyer percentage or converting more of your users into buyers is becomes very important so that's the second point that i want to mention on this the third piece is that sub dollar is actually a fairly wide range uh, i can give you an example from india uh, 1 dollar is roughly about 80 indian rupees now when you're trying to price your sku within uh, within your game for the india market would you want to price it at 80 rupees 50 rupees 20 rupees 10 rupees 5 rupees there's, there's there are multiple options over there the the recommendation that i would have would be to introduce multiple skus and ab test it out right and multiple skus at at various sub dollar price points and then test it out and this again applies not just to india but other emerging markets as well and the last point that i want to mention on this is 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 possibly the most important one yes you can offer deep discounts to to your users in emerging markets however that may create uh multiple other problems for you in terms of user fairness across different geos as well as uh, a long term uh, sustainability of giving these deep discounts the more the 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 strategy that i've seen work for a lot of developers is actually offering some value that's equivalent to that price point now what do i mean by that when you're introducing sub dollar price points within your game offer value or in game currency that equates to that sub dollar price point have something that similarly priced as compared to the value that you are off have something that similarly valued as compared to the price point within that you are offering and that's when uh, that's when it make make a lot more sense for you uh, within the game right here are a couple of screenshots uh, that that i've shared uh, 29 rupees or 30 rupees that you can see over there roughly translates to about 40 cents 
uh, 35 to 40 cents uh, in terms of uh, Indian, like converting the Indian currency to the US dollar. But if you see over here, they have, they're offering a value that's corresponding to that price point. Even though there, there is a heavy discount that's there, some of the other price points would have a lot more currency, a lot more in-game coins um, that, that get offered. And hence, that's this is a strategy that's working for some of these developers, right? Um, so A, introduce sub-dollar pricing. B, introduce multiple sub-dollar priced SKUs. But C, have value that's corresponding to those sub-dollar price, right? So that's something that, that you must look at for emerging markets. And that's 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 one of the things that's working really well for, for developers that are making money uh, via their games in emerging markets. The next bit that I want to talk about is local payments. Now, identifying and partnering with the local payment channels is critical uh, because there are a bunch of different digital payment options that will be available across emerging markets. In some, some emerging markets, uh, maybe a telecom provider is really popular as a payment option. In some places, there might be a, a e-wallet that's really popular or a super app that's really popular. Uh, in India, for example, we have a payment, uh, digital payment channel called UPI or Unified Payment Interface. It's a government platform that allows other organizations like a Google Pay or a Amazon Pay uh, to build their payment solutions on. Uh, and it's it's the most widely used digital uh, transaction, a uh, digital payment transaction mode in India. It's also available to make payments within, it's also available as a form of payment within Play Store as well. You can make payments on UPI within games, but you need to understand and research about these digital payment options, right? Why would you need to research? Then you can create awareness about these within your games. Maybe some of the users are not aware that they can make payments via these digital payment options in the game. You could maybe showcase to them that via via maybe some guidance, some videos, etc. The next bit is that Google Play recharge codes are also very popular. And across emerging markets, they're also popular in developed markets, but they are popular across emerging markets, especially because uh, when users can purchase this either via online or offline, they could get some additional discount. And hence, that additional value that's being provided via Google Play recharge codes makes them really popular. So now you can you have an opportunity to partner with some of these platforms that provide or offer these Google Play recharge codes. You can showcase your offer and events at the point of purchase thus creating more awareness about your in-game offer and events and at the same time making sure that more users are, are purchasing or spending these, these recharge codes within your game and off, uh, within your games. And the example, the screenshot over here is just an example of exactly that, right? We have uh, a game in India that, that's uh, from a global developer that's showcasing their, their in-game event on Amazon Pay and, 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 and the and provides an opportunity for users to get some additional cash back uh, if they are making that, uh, if they are purchasing the Google Play recharge code over there and then redeeming it within that game. So that's the third piece that I want to talk about. We spoke about content, we spoke about pricing, and, and then we spoke about payments right now. The fourth uh, pillar that I would want to focus on for localization is local partnerships. Uh, and this is uh, fairly straightforward. This partnering with the relevant influencers who are locally based. Uh, so you need to identify the local influencers that connect with the users in a particular geo. Yes, global influencers, global uh, YouTube content creators are really popular in emerging markets as well. But there would be a bunch of uh, of local players. They might not be as big uh, as some of the uh, some of the large global uh, content creators, but they would be maybe creating content in a local language, and hence their reach might be more wider. Um, and hence. There is there's an opportunity for you to identify partner with some of these local influencers, and then invest in building that local community. Right, get some feedback in from from these local players, uh, local influencers, and thus incorporate those changes within your games, and then help you improve your your monetization as well as engagement. Uh, the example is again uh, from 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 a global developer. They've They've invested significantly in, again, this is an example for India, but it's true for other emerging markets as well. Uh, but they've partnered with smaller local developers, uh, local influencers rather, uh, to create moments uh, uh, to partner with them on, on esports, on, on their YouTube channels, on, on social media, 
to create engaging content for local users and thus uh, they're building their local partnerships, right? So that's something that's extremely critical for you to focus on as well. I'm just going to summarize now this. Uh, I know we covered a bunch of different topics, hey, but uh, I started off with the with the fact that emerging markets are offer a significant an opportunity and it's also growing. Uh, it's 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 large in size in terms of user spends within games as well as it's growing fast uh, as compared to some of the developed markets. The four pillars for for localizing your game to successfully monetize emerging market users, right? You, I'm sure you're already able to reach those users uh, via play as well as other platforms, but monetizing them effectively, that's the key challenge. Um, and you can do that by localizing your content with the relevant offers and events. You can align with the regional calendar for every region, geo, and then thus create that content and in-game offers. Introduce sub-dollar price points within your game. If you don't have them within your game, look out for those opportunities at, and, and create it at the relevant value. You, you can discount it. Uh, you can discount your existing SKUs and provide uh, a sub-dollar price point, but it would be a lot more meaningful if you were to create the sub-dollar price points at the right value, right? Create additional SKUs for it. Third would be to showcase offers and events at the price, at the point of purchase. Identify those local payment partners. Identify popular forms of payment uh, that that are there locally, and then engage uh, with those with those platforms or players to promote your in-game events and offers. And finally, uh, identify and invest in local influencers to build that community. Right, we spoke about it at the very end, uh, but that's something that that's critical as well for you to. Uh, for you to uh, engage with with users in emerging markets and be also able to monetize them at a later stage. So that's that's more of, more or less what the content that I wanted to cover. Uh, I know we have about six minutes left. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions that you may have uh, or any 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 inputs or anything that you may want to discuss. Um, I don't see I I can't see the chat over here, uh, so I'll request. Uh, uh, UV's help maybe with with seeing some of the questions, uh, but yeah, if there are any questions, I'm more than happy to take them. Yes, and I thank you very much. Uh, for election it's very interesting, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's pretty useful uh, for a lot of our viewers. And uh, yeah, let's start with some questions. And uh, as I prefer, you know, uh, to start with some very dumb question, but very important to sometimes understand why we're doing something in our life. So uh, my question. Why, why, like um, I, as a company or a developer, indie developer, why should I go to emerging markets? You know, like let's make like step back because a lot of people they just dreaming. We need to go North America, Europe, Australia, etc. Uh, why should I go uh, to emerging markets? Mm, for what benefits I'm going there? Could you just like briefly explain? Oh, well, I, I think I can I can make it really quick and short. One uh, massive user base. Uh, and thus the opportunity to monetize that user base, right? Uh, the amount of users that you would find in emerging markets will be significantly higher in 2x, 3x times as let's say uh, in, in more developed markets. Uh, and even if you were to monetize a fraction of those users, uh, the revenue will be significantly higher for you. B, uh, the competition for, for those user set will be there, but it will be slightly lower as compared to what you will face in say a developed market. So that that makes it maybe a little more easier for you to then enter those markets and 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 capture those users as well as get them to monetize on your games, right? Uh, and third bit, they are growing. They're growing really really fast. Uh, and uh, a lot of the data gets normalized. A lot of external, uh, lot of ex rather a lot of external reports don't necessarily showcase the opportunity size correctly and that really pains me because we get access to the real data we know how how big it is uh, but there there are a lot of developers that that make a lot more triple digit million money uh, like million dollar money kind of revenue from from individual emerging markets right and so uh, that's the kind of opportunity that exists and which is why you should be looking at this yeah, thank you. Definitely, my very clear answer. And uh, one more question: uh, What type of like what type of media or any like resources you recommend to follow? You know, to to depend on it, like to be in the industry news, uh, to understand that you're doing everything correctly, 
and uh, using all best technologies like to localize the game to be good in the new market. Right. You, if I understand the question correctly, you are looking, you are asking for like which resources can game developers go to to see if they are doing yeah, things I'm, well. I want to say like more about you know like media something. I follow on internet, like I read something uh, to get like updates about everything that's going in this field. Yeah, I think the Google Play channels are are a great uh, form of uh, of validating some of the content that you're creating. Uh, there are there are quite a few medium posts out there. Uh, that have been that have been written in the past by Google Play team members helping that have worked with developers. They've they've got them uh, success in emerging markets, and you can also uh, read about it online uh, on the Medium channel. There are also webinars that that the teams would do, which you can follow and 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 find uh, some relevant inputs on. Uh, then there's also Game Cam that that Mario runs, and and it has some great content on on emerging markets as well. Um, so yeah, those those would be some of the uh, some of the forums that I would I would recommend following. Thank you very much, Vinay. So unfortunately, we don't have uh, no more time for any other questions. But uh, thank you very much uh, for for election. And uh, it was Vinay Charania with us from Google Game Place. Uh, I hope everyone could find you in uh, internet, like LinkedIn or something else. Follow you, you know, like also to keep to keep all the information, new information to be updated. And uh, thank you very much again, Vinay, for your time. It was very interesting. And uh, very soon we start with our next uh, lecture. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Yubi. It's, it's an absolute honor to be part of the, the event. Thank you so much for providing me the opportunity.